Welcome everybody, this is John Denton with another Lunch and Learn in the DNA of Business series. And today it's my great pleasure to have Peter Butler from Smarter Websites join us. So welcome Peter. Thank you. Peter will introduce himself shortly. So the idea of these Lunch and Learn sessions is to spend about 40 or 45 minutes with experts and guest speakers who can help business owners like us get some really good tips and tools and tricks and things that we can do to grow our business. So Peter, I've known for uh, probably 14 years, I think I worked it out. And I haven't given you permission to share your screen yet, Peter. Sorry. So, um, and when I have done things with Peter, he has tended to take over uh, as he just demonstrated then. <laughs> so, there was a time when uh, he and I ran some face-to-face -face, uh, LinkedIn and Facebook workshops and um, as he reminded me often when I tried to get a word in that it was really all about him. But yes. anyway, <laughs> so Peter, without further ado, you're obviously ready to go, so introduce yourself and let's get into it. Okay, and that was the greatest talk time you've had in anything we've ever done together, John, so uh, good. <laughs> That's true. So today we're going to cover off on, we're going to focus on how Google views your business and your website online, and basically how big is your digital footprint. So you're going to walk away with your website and online presence benchmarked. You're going to understand how better to play the game with Google and you're gonna have some actionable insights to actually implement. So what you gotta understand, everything we do online is to please two entities, people and search engines. It's that simple. If you play the game with the search engines, you get more people. People have got the money, yeah? So through the series, I'm going to refer to this page. So this is, don't go there yet, but it's on my website, it's under blog post, 100 Days to World Domination. And this is actually 100 blog posts, actually 111, um, all under uh, different categories that will help business owners. So I'm going to refer to this a few times. Um, so I've created that business series to help business to get on track, stay on track with easy to implement ideas for boosting your business. And you can go down to my homepage and scroll all the way down the bottom. Sorry for that quick jar of the eyesight and you can actually register to get the series there. Okay, let's get started. So let's talk about benchmarking your website. The first thing you should do, just close your eyes while I zoom up to the top again, go to your website, don't do this now, you can do this after, you will get the recording. I will notice if you're getting sidetracked. Go to your website, copy the address, go to a fresh tab, put in site colon, Paste in your address, no gaps, no nothing. Now this is in the public space. So you can see here, my results are 993. That's how many pages Google have indexed of my website. Index meaning no exist. So we've had cases where clients have come on board, we do a benchmark before we touch one thing, even if they haven't got SEO, because we know the websites we build get more pages indexed. So we do a benchmark first, and this is important for you to do it before you even touch or play with your website with some of the tips and tricks we're gonna cover. Because you wanna know where you started. The reason we do it is because we need to know where we started because we can't get bragging rights otherwise. Does that make sense? So this I would encourage you to do yourself. So just copy and paste that or screenshot that, those results into a word or a notepad, yeah? So generally I screenshot it. So that's the first thing. You want to know exactly where you started. So does anybody want to volunteer for me to quickly do that on your website? Any show of hands? Put your hand up. What have we got? Microscopes, Steve Wilkinson, microscopes. What is it again? Yeah. Spell it correctly. .com.au? Yep. So again, do not type your address when you're doing this. Always copy and paste the results. So we'll just put that in there. Remember, no spaces. 
So you've got 351 results. So it, it's not a bad, good, or what, it, it just is what it is. But you want to know where you start before you do any SEO activities. So record that. So it's benchmarking. That's what we're focusing on, yeah? So there's another tool you can use to do a speed check called GT Metrics. And again, you go to your website, copy the address. Hmm. Yeah, you have to sign up. I'm going to do a little cheat. Actually, I'm going to leave that in the interest of time. Just know that you can go to GT Metrics. You can see the spelling there. Oh, there we go. You can see I, I'm. You can actually see we have an active account, and we do tests all the time. Yeah. So my latest speed test is 5.6. So again, you would want to do this. Get a result and just screenshot those results. Okay, next thing, and show of hands, who has Google Analytics on their website? Who's tracking the visits that Google have? You would have, Steve. Andrew, do you have? Yeah, you should have. Jenny, not so sure. Helen, no idea. John Denton does. I'm just gonna show you how to quickly check it. Right, so we're gonna use John's site. It's very easy to do. You just go to your website and then just right click somewhere on the background. View page source. Now, do not freak out when this page appears. It's a whole heap of gold you got. All we're looking is for two letters and I'll show you that very quickly. View page source. So like I said, whole heap of gold you And you just go control F, right? And we're looking for UA. And John, John has lots of UAs in his website and just scroll through. Oh, my lordy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's go away from that because you guys are going to slip into a trance. In there is some code. And it says, oh, I better show it to you, actually. If you scroll down, you'll come to it, Peter. There we go. So we're looking for that there. UA and a number. The reason you can't put in the number is because it's different on every site. Possibly if you do the ash, dash. So do that, UA dash, and it will take you through to a code. That means you know you've got Google tracking. Now you just need to be able to access that through analytics, but it's important to know that because again, even if you never log into your Google account or it's two years between visits, it's really good to have that information because it tells you how many visits you had, how many pages they visited, um, you know, what pages they stayed on the longest, all that sort of information. Okay, so I'm going to go away from that, otherwise you'll slip into a uh, trance. Now, who here has a Google business listing? Put your hand up. Yeah, Google business listing. Jenny, you should have. Hmm, okay, we need to talk. Oh, I think we might have had that conversation, Helen. So we're going to do a check. Let's pick on Helen because she's being studious and making notes. To check you whether you've got a business listing or how it appears to the world, I would recommend that you use uh, incognito. Because if I went and did a web check on my business name by typing in my business name here, well, I'm logged into my Google business account. So it's going to show me jaded results. So you're actually better off going to incognito, opening that up, and all you do, do you know how to do that, Jenny? You're pulling a face. So go down to Chrome, right click, new incognito window. Thanks for the facial expression. I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, feedback. Yeah, well done. Um, so new incognito window, and then you open this up, and then you simply put in your business name. So we're going to go for Rise Legal. Okay, so does Rise Legal have another uh, iteration? I, I'm picking it up from the sign before. Rise Lawyers, would that be, would it be registered? No? Okay, so we probably need to talk because you don't have a listing. Let's, Andrew, yours would be Andrew Huffer. 
um, probably Andrew Huffer and Associates. We'll just try Andrew Huffer. There we go. So we can see that Andrew has a business listing registered under his name. It would probably come up with Andrew Huffer and Associates right there. But let's just leave it at that. This thing on the right is called a knowledge panel. It's your business listing, yeah? And when somebody does their due diligence on you as a business, right, you want to be portrayed in the best possible light, right? We all want to look good online. That's, yep. So this is a knowledge panel and this is your website listing. So you can see Andrew's got uh, several iterations of his listing. He's got his LinkedIn profile, other associations, YouTube and so forth. So when I'm doing my due diligence, he looks pretty good. I'm just going to show off now because I can. So I'm going to Google my business name again. I'm doing it in incognito, so I'm seeing it, how the world sees it. And it's pretty impressive. You've got the knowledge panel, but I'm also showing products. I'm showing my reviews, which is gold. Um, and here, I'm also showing posts. Now, if we get time, I'm going to run through how you can improve your Google business listing. If we get time, there's other things we have to cover. Not only that, there's my website listed there, but lots of iterations of that. And then there's all my directory listings and so forth. Yeah. So is that clear how to do that? You can review this video later and go over and check this stuff. Now, this, this is literally all about just benchmarking, just knowing where you started. After this call, I think it's important to go, okay, well, I'm going to do the site index check to find out how many pages I've got indexed by Google. Um, I'm going to do a speed test. We're using GT metrics, just so you know. Do I have Google tracking? So I know where I started. Because if you don't, you want to get that started now and then have a quick look at your Google business uh, listing. Yeah? Okay, so that's basically benchmarking. Now we're going to talk about rankings. We're going to pick on John's side initially because we can. And um, here's the question. How did Google even know what to rank for? And my phone just came Details. my phone just came on because I said the word Google. Um, <laughs> sh <laughs> um, so how does Google even know what to rank your website for? Um, well, the first thing is the title, which is up here. So when, you, when you're looking at a website, if you hold your cursor up there, it pops up. That's what you're telling Google you want to be known for. It's that simple. So I'm going to have a quick look at some of your websites with your permission. But I've got a little tool that makes it easier because, you know, holding my cursor up there only tells me one snippet of information. Helen, I know you got distracted, so I'm just going to repeat it quickly. All you need to do is to go to your website, hold your cursor over there, and it tells you the title of your website. That's the first thing that Google look at, yeah? But I've got a tool that I use. So I, I know Andrew Huffer well. Uh, and this tool is called, it's a Chrome extension. So if you don't use Chrome, tough, you'll have to. Um, but this is a Chrome extension called SEO Meta in one click. Don't go and get it now. Don't go and play with it. I'm going to check out your sites for you now anyway. So let's have a quick look at Jen. So that's SEO Meta in one click. All it is is it shows easily this sort of information. So I'm going to click on it. So there's John's title. So he wants to be known for business mentor. Business Mentors Perth, and it's showing his phone number. What's the second thing that Google look at? The description. Okay, so you know when you go and search for something and it comes up with, in the search result, comes up with a headline, and then there's a bunch of text under it? Well, that headline is the title. That's it. So that's the message that you're conveying to Google and people. Remember I said, play the game with people and search engines. So the second thing, the text underneath, is the description. Now, there's a guide on the characters. Generally, for the title, it's 65 characters. And for the description, it's 165 characters. Now, John's got too many, but that's because Google changed the game to 320 and then went back to 165. Yeah? 
So we're going to fix that up, aren't we? We are going to, we are going to fix that up, John. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got me committed. So that's how you can quickly check and see what Google wants to uh, rank, going to rank your website for. So uh, Andrew Huffer, did you want me to look at your website, bring that up? Yeah, cool. Okay. So there we are. And we go, hang which tool? I've got too many. There you go. Now I know that um, Andrew has some rankings and he generates business from Google. Uh, so he's telling Google that he wants to be known for facilitation, team building and community engagement. And then his description meets the, the um, parameters. So he's got a green score using this little tool. And he is, um, so that's his title and description. So the, the meta titles is up to 70 characters and meta description, if you make them too long, what happens is they get cut off. So if you had it too long, say on John's, I won't go back there, it might cut off halfway through a sentence, yeah? And you don't want that. Now, here's the thing. Google don't rank websites at all. They rank web pages. So your home page has one should have one keyword. You want to be known for that keyword. If you try and stuff in 20 keywords into here, number one, you'll blitz the amount of characters, but you're confusing Google. Google come there and they go, what do you want to be known for, sir, ma'am? And you've got too many keywords in there and they go, yeah, no, don't understand and they won't rank you at all. So what, with, what Google do is they rank web pages, page by page. So your primary service pages should have their own identity. So this one should be known for facilitation. This one should be known for community engagement. This one for training, coaching, and so on. So does that make sense? Mm. Yeah? Thumbs up? <clears throat> okay. So uh, what about, let's have a look at... Um, Steve, he volunteered before, so I don't have to ask him now. Microscopes Australia, microscopes.com.au. So there's there's a what I do, Steve, just a heads up, and you would only want to change these little by little because I know you've got good rankings from previous conversations. You've got 65 characters available. And like I said, you only want one keyword per thing. But what I have is a rule of three where you can have derivatives of that. So if I just go back to John's actually, because I know that one gives me uh, different uh, iterations of it. So I've got business mentor. I validate and I know the search volume for that because this is important. The keywords that you use, you can make sure, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Are people actually using them? So I'll give you a quick case study. Uh, an age carer we worked for in Melbourne or worked with in Melbourne. He, when a client comes on board for SEO, we ask him what keywords they should be ranking for. He gave us 29 keywords. We invalidated 19 of those keywords. People were not searching for those 19 keywords. So we're left with 10. They, we call them seed keywords, and then we do keyword research to find more. So you've got to validate the keywords. Are people really using that? What do you think they are? So I'm going to get into that in a moment. So, but there's an iteration, business mentor. Business Mentors Perth. You can see in here, we've got Small Business Mentoring. So you can see it's really one primary keyword with different versions of that keyword that perhaps have been validated. Does that make sense? Mm. Good? Okay. Right. I know it's a bit techy, but it, it, it's really important. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some others. Um, oh, they're not even on the call, so they can go away. Jenny Murphy, you okay with me having a look at yours, Jenny? Yeah. yeah. I just, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, I just want to know where does it pick up that information from, the title and the description for each in, page? In, in the admin area of your website, there's a place to set that. Right, okay. Yep. Cool. Good question. So you're known for your name, which makes sense because that's a part of your branding, um, but you could probably look at other keywords there and in here to be more specific, yeah? Okay, so that, that would be important for you. Um, Perway are not on the call, so they can go away. Nick was on no, the call. Perway's on the call. Oh, are they? Yeah, we've got Louise. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Oh, <laughs> yeah, got... How are you? I just killed yeah, you. My bad. 
I came in a slightly late, sorry. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, we, we spoke a long time ago. Um, we did. Okay, so are you okay with me having a quick preview? Yes, please, that would be great, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Perway Construction, Home Renovation and Home Improvement. So that's what you're telling Google that you want to be known for. Um, you know, here you've, you've, so you've used your character limit, 121, so you've got more characters available. Specifying Perth WA makes sense for your industry. Um, probably don't need to repeat your name there. There's probably other uh, variation of keywords you could use there to get better leverage and go up to the 165 characters, yeah? So that's the home page, but then I'm not going to go through these page, but then you've got home renovations, home. So you would have a keyword or using the rule of three, a set of three keywords that are all closely related for each one of those single pages. Yeah? Does that make sense? Cool. Thumbs up. Okay. Who else have we got here? I've got too many tabs open. So Bits Web Design, are they on the call? Mm. Oh, yeah, there you are. You're, that's you? Okay, cool. Hi, how are you doing? So let's have a quick look at you. Are you, are you okay with me looking at yours? Yeah? The world can see it anyway, but yeah. Uh, so we have got construction websites. You're targeting a particular niche. So you know SEO, so you would have a look and make sure that that's on track. Unless, of course, there's a new, work, new website and you've only just put in common sense keywords for now, which is a good way to do it. Um, yeah, so that's your setup. Who else have we got? Uh, Nick is off the call, correct? Oh, Nick's back. There you go, Nick. Hello. Do you want me to do your website? Thumbs up. Hey, mate. Cool. Good on you. So home inspections, quality protection for your family and assets. So, again, remember before I said that everything we're doing online is for people, search engines. You've got to do it for the search engines, but this is also a headline, so it has to have a bit of a slant towards people because people are the ones that are finding the results and searching for this. So if it appeases them, then they're more likely to click. Does that make sense? So there is that balance between search engines, keyword focus, and the people. Um, so, you know, the reason I'm sharing that is because Nick's put in family and assets, so he's trying to do that emotional tie, and that makes sense. Um, gone over character, so you're likely to uh, get it cut out. You know, this specifies 50 to 65, but it's probably up to 70. So it's just a guide, and then you can check yourself and see whether it's cut off or not. Who else have I missed out on? Andrew, done you. We were looking at LinkedIn earlier. That's fine. Is there anybody else that wants me to do their website that I've missed out on? Um, I'm just reading uh, in the chat messages. No, I'll come back to them. You can have a look at mine, if, but it's in progress, of course. It's in, Stephen, <laughs> we... The work in progress. Yeah, I was going to say, is your site even live yet? We only started no. last week. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got my homework to do on that. Yeah, and, and look, what we do when we have a, a client come on board, like Stephen uh, commissioned us last week to do, build a website, there's no SEO as a part of that. We put in common sense SEO. Uh, how many times have you gone to a website where up here in the tab, the browser tab, it says home? That's because nothing is being set at all. That's the default setting, home. Uh, and so that's had no SEO done on it, but we, as a courtesy, will at least put the uh, business name uh, within that area. Okay, so what you need to understand now, I'm just going to go back to John's website. So this is just the beginning. This is you having a conversation with Google and saying, hey, Google, please, Mr. Google, can you try and rank me for that? So that's just the very beginning. Don't expect to do this and be on page one in Google because, remember, there's thousands of business out there and page one in Google is only 10 spots. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, mute my phone because it keeps talking to me every time I say Google. <laughs> Note to self, remove phone from room. So this is just that conversation. It's not the end of SEO. It's just the beginning, yeah? Okay, keyword rankings. Please understand when you go and do a search, so if we went Business Mentors Perth uh, and did a search on Google, John won't come up on page one, 
But you know what? He might come up on page one because he has been to his website. So because there's a thing called preferential treatment. So Google will go, oh, we know you've been to your website. You must like it. So we're going to show you on page one in Google. Yeah. And so you've got, when you do that, a search like that, you've really got to use incognito. So you would use incognito and do the search and then scroll through page by page by page. But I've got a little bit of a hack for you. So let's go back to Google's website, um, John's website. What I do to find where websites are ranking, and I did this last week and I found a guy had 35 keywords and he was on page two in Google and he was disappointed. Well, to me, that's gold because to get to page one in Google, you've got to get through the first 10 pages first. So you've got to get into the top 10, then you get into the top three, and then you get onto page one and life will never be the same again. Does that make sense? Mm. So I use a tool and I'm going to... Quickly run that now. So I'm going to, Andrew Huffer, do you want me to do your, or actually, while I'm here, do you want me to run your site, Nick? Are you okay? I'm not, I can't see Nick, actually. Has he dropped out again? No, no, Nick's there. No, no, I'm just down the list, mate. Oh, no dramas from me. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to run this. So this is a paid tool. Actually, I'll run John first because he's already in there. So this is where John is ranking. So I'll just go to the full report. So don't go and buy this software. It's about $100 a month. I'm going to show you a free one, but I'm just going to show you the breadth of what happens and what people don't realise, how close they are to gold. So for John Denton, he's actually ranking for Anna Chandler Design Sales. So Andrew Huffer would remember um, Chandler, Michael Chandler, I think it was. Um, so this is the particular page he's ranking for. For that so he's written a uh, well it's actually a testimonial but where the gold is is business mentor Perth John is actually position 48 so that's page five so when I showed John this it was like okay that's disappointing well I'm excited because it's he's in the top 10 and so now he's got to work towards getting that onto page one but then how many people are actually searching for it because that's important well, there's 140 people searching for that per month. So is it worth ranking? Is it, are we validating the keyword? Does that make sense? So it is worth, um, you know, ranking. Jenny, did you have a question or no? Okay, good. So here's another iteration of that keyword, small business mentor Perth. And there's 90 searches per month. Now he's on position 78, which is page eight in Google. So nobody's ever going to find him for that. But at least he knows that he's got a ranking for that and he can work towards improving that ranking. Making sense? Yeah. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to go back to John's website. I did a keyword research and one of the things that I found was that the search volume, if we go back to here, and we look at his metadata, Business Mentors Perth, nobody's actually searching for that. They're actually searching, we just saw it, for Business Mentor Perth. So it's only a little bit of a fine tuning, but it's worth doing. And then we've got Small Business Mentoring Service. So Small Business Mentoring Service there. Okay, let's go back to the little check. Small Business Mentor Perth. He's got a ranking for. So if he went and fine-tuned this smooth small business mentor, Perth, then that would be more accurate alignment for his current rankings and help to improve his rankings, yeah? Mm. A little bit technical, but it's the sort of detail you need to understand that goes on and at least you will have some tools at the end of today to go and have a play. So let's have a quick look at Nick's site while that's coming up. So, wow, you've got a total of 47 keywords ranking, Nick. So that's good. Uh, position five, 
home inspection company, uh, 70. And sometimes you're ranking for keywords. You know, I used to rank for tow, tow, tow truck service Northbridge, something totally bizarre because of a testimonial. So clearly it wasn't going to help my business. Uh, ceiling collapse, what to do? Page five. So I would have, yeah, that's a blog post you can see in there. Uh, one thing I'd recommend there, Nick, is um, is have a look at your categories. I can see that that's uncategorized. So maybe have a look at your categories. Make sure your categories are keyword rich. That would actually help to uh, strengthen your rankings. About home, So you've got quite a few keywords there on page one in Google. So there's four listed there. Home inspection, look at this. Position 11, so that's page two in Google, so so close to gold, and that's got 480 searches per month. So that is a key word that you need to focus on and check your SEO. Now, I'm not going to go and relook at your metadata and make recommendations. We, we just don't have enough time to do that. But there's gold for you right there, Nick. Okay, so take that away. Um, and then look how many pages you've got on page two in Google. Um, 21, that's page three, um, and page four. So, and we're looking down here, looking for the gold. So 320, that's a keyword you would want to be focusing on. Uh, there's another one. I don't know what that's about, but anyway. So you get the idea, yeah? Now, if anybody wants me to send a screenshot of this, right, as soon as I'm finished this call, send me an email. So just make a note of my email address, Peter at smarterwebsites.com.au so send me an email because you don't get and if you don't send me an email I need a prompt uh, and I will do a search and send you the results and then you have insight into what to look for uh, okay so let's have a look for who, who else wants to volunteer does anybody want to volunteer put your hand up because I'm not gonna and I can't see everybody for some reason why can't I see everybody it's really annoying oh there's a hand Louise, okay, let's have a look at Perway. I can't even remember what we spoke about ages ago. Something, you needed something edited, I think. Okay, so you've got 49 keywords ranking uh, for your branding. You would expect to be page one. You hope in heck that you were. Uh, construction services, position eight, thousand. Holy crap, there you go. So that's... Pretty awesome. So you, you know you, you're close to getting gold. You need to focus on getting that up. Um, so there's quite a few. Well, there's two keywords, page one, quite a few, page two, or few page two, and so it goes on. So looking down through the volume, and look, you always end up with variances between the different SEO tools because they pull the data from different places. Um, so there's another one, Home Improvements Perth, page five. So probably want to have a look at that. That's sort of a thing where it's got good search volume. Remember I said Google don't rank websites. They rank web pages, page by page. That's where you'd go, hmm, okay. So are we trying to rank the home page for that? Yes or no? You don't want to confuse it with construction services because that's got nothing to do with that, although it does. You would actually go and create a page and then optimise that page for that term and then you will get that page on the page one in Google. You can see here, internal home renovations is on a services page. Does that make sense? Hopefully I'm not going too techy for you. Uh, Dentist Sterling, clearly did some work there, but that's not gonna help you build your business. <laughs> so, um, first time showing, so it goes on. Okay, does anybody else? I can probably only go one more. Can I, can I just interrupt? You may. Um, in the interest of time as well. You were gonna, Tell us about a free tool. This is a paid one. Okay, cool. So I'll do that right now. So let's have a look. And this is, again, a Chrome extension. Go and get this later. There's two tools I'm going to show you, actually. So one is Fat Rank. So this is a rank checker. So Fat Rank. Go and get that tool afterwards. And you can basically put in your search term. Now, when you're doing it, just make sure you stay on this tab uh, and... We run that check. Oh, that'll be right. Okie dokie. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, it's a really good tool, except it doesn't work. Maybe <laughs> hmm, it does work and it's absolutely gold. I'm just refreshing the page. It might be Zoom interfering with it. So, yeah, it worked yesterday. Yeah. Coach for, uh, expect, I haven't spelt it right. What it does, it will actually go and tell you the ranking for each one of the key terms that you're checking. Yeah, okay. My bad. It worked yesterday on the test with John. So, but have a look at it. Fat rank, it is a really, really cool little tool. Yeah. So, the two tools mentioned so far is SEO, Meta, in one click. And there is also uh, Fat rank. And there is another tool that called Surfer SEO. Now, I can't show it to you because it won't work for me, but it will work. It works for absolutely everybody else. Surfer SEO. Again, a Chrome extension. I'm going to show you what it, how it works in a different tab. So I'm going to go for uh, business. This is how it works. I'm using a different tool, a paid one. Um, business coach. Okay, Perth. I'm going to do a search for that. And Surfer Pro works the same. I'm using a different one, but it actually shows you. Remember before, we wanted to know, we need to validate the keywords. Are people really looking for that or, or do I just think they are? Yeah. Um, so Business Coaching Perth was what I did a search for and nobody's looking for that because it's not coming up in the results. But Business Coach Perth is. And there's 390 people per month looking for that. All these figures are per month. And I'm searching in Australia. Now, comp means competition level. What's the competition? It's out of one. So 0.5 or 0.45 there is actually not too bad to achieve. It's, it's actually fairly uh, easy to achieve. Doesn't mean to say it's easy, but it's achievable. If it's a 0.9, good luck with that. People have been doing it for 20 years before before you and you won't have any luck. So Surfer SEO will give you these results, which is really useful to know. Okie um, dokie. All right. So I've put your email address in the chat yep. section and we've... Um, just not... about out of time. So, yeah, we're just about out of time. Okay. So um, I'll just quickly wrap mm -hmm. it up. So, so how, go on. Yep, go ahead. You want to make okay. an offer to these guys? Uh, look, yeah. So if you want the results from SEMrush, send me that email and I will send you uh, that report. I also have some other reports. If you go through to my website, I have reports somewhere. Where is it? Um, under services, over on web reports, I've got three different types of reports that I do. So I do a full web report, or I can do a report on your Google My Business, or I can do an on-page SEO audit. Okay, so you can just go there and request one of those. Quite a detailed report. It takes me about 30 minutes to run it. So um, please only request it if you actually intend not to do business with me, but to take action. Don't just let it sit in your inbox. Take action, whether it's your webby, us, whatever, don't really care. Just take action. That's what I request of you. So the best SEO, just in summarising, the best SEO activities you can do is to check your homepage metadata and refine that. If you need help with that, just let me know, but go and do that. Then also have a look at your other service pages. So go to each one of your service pages and, again, do the same thing. Have a look. At least be aware of where you're at with that, yeah? Uh, Google My Business, we didn't get an opportunity to do, but if you can do regular blog posts, that helps with your website. But remember, before you take any of those activities, I'm just going to uh, bring them up. I'm just going to take that Word doc across. Uh, so there's the best act SEO activities. Benchmark your website first, check and refine your home page data, have a look at your other page, check your Google My Business listing and do regular blog posts. So hopefully I've achieved what I said I would. 
I think you've achieved a lot, Peter. You've given us a whole lot of tools and tips and cool. things that we can do. Excellent. So um, I think if everybody gives you a thumbs up, then, yeah, we're getting good. Excellent. Okay, right. cool. And high fives as well. So, cool. And I, would, I just want to say in uh, closing that if you'd like more information about what I do, then uh, there's more Lunch and Learns coming up. The, uh, I run a couple of business owner mentoring groups on a monthly basis with some help in between. And I've got a couple of um, turn your business into a sale level asset workshops coming up as well. So more about that afterwards. Thank you all very much for being here. I will keep the meeting going um, for Q&A, but I'm just going to stop the recording at this point and say thank you all very much for being here.